In this season of draft mode, the game has changed. The two best trainers at Night Mount, James and Pat, will be duking it out in a best two out of three with the Pokemon trading card game. In each episode, they'll be using one expansion from each generation and opening 10 card packs. After each episode, the winner will spin a wheel to determine which expansion will be played in the next episode. As with Season 1, the cards open from each pack will not carry over, and therefore both trainers will have to rethink and revamp their strategies each episode. Welcome to Draft Mode Season 2. Alright, so here we are back with the wheel here, and uh, this is a good wheel. So we have Diamond and Pearl this set. We will be doing Platinum and Heart Gold in the next set, since there was a clear divide between the three different sets. That's how we're going to kind of progress here. This gives us seven for this wheel, and then we're going to have nine for the next one. So we're going to be in Generation 4 for two episodes, so hopefully you guys don't mind that too much. But without any further ado, we're going to get straight into spinning this. I'm really hoping for Stormfront here. That's a really great slice. A lot of very strong Pokemon. But regardless, we're going to be able to see some of Alexa's. So let's just go ahead and take a look at what we get. Alright, so we got Secret Wonders. Not, not necessarily a bad set. It's no Stormfront. But I think that there's some interesting stuff in there. And we're going to get straight into it in the breakdown. As we enter into the Diamond and Pearl metagame, a lot of things change. First, there are two new card types to discuss. We have Level X Pokemon and SP or Special Pokemon. Level X Pokemon are treated just as if they are the original Pokemon, but simply an upgrade. This means that they have access to all of the original attacks, and you can only keep up to four of the same Level X or regular Pokemon in your deck. In addition to Level X, there are the Special Pokemon. These Pokemon come with a signifier for Team Galactic, Gym Leaders, Elite Four, Champion, or Frontier Brain. Each of these cards are very quick to get out, as they are all basic Pokemon. However, this set specifically, Secret Wonders, contains only one meta card and two Pokemon level Xs. The only meta card in this set is Roseanne's Research, a great searcher that allows you to have access to energy or Pokemon. The two level Xs in this set, Haunt Girl level X and Gardevoir level X, are very powerful, and within this sealed environment, could shape the entire meta. But without any further ado, we're going to get straight into the polls to see what we are going to pull today. Alright, so here we are in the pack opening. So we're going to get straight into 10 packs here of Secret Wonders. Let's see what we get. So first pack here. Alright, uh, I mean, a decent enough grass core. Grass is not that bad in this in this meta, actually. Yeah, interesting little darkness energy right there. So this is definitely an option here. I'm seeing a couple halfway decent Pokemon if we're able to get all of their evolution stages. Alright, pack number two. Ooh, ho, oh, that's pretty big in case I wanted to run fire. Fire isn't as good as grass, but it is a decent enough counter to grass. So that's always something to keep in mind. All right, so let's open up 10 packs of Secret Wonders. Uh, I have no idea what's in this set. Going into Diamond and Pearl, however, uh, I'm actually kind of excited to see what kind of Pokemon we're going to get. Okay, okay, cool, cool, cool. Kecleon. Wow, I forgot that Kecleon exists. I also don't know what Wormadam is. All right, pack number two. Oh no, the unknowns are in here. Why? More unknowns. Actually, I'm very happy to see the switch though. The switch is very good. Um, still nothing to use that darkness energy with. We did get Charmeleon, so uh, we got had Charmander in the last one. And Electabuzz. Let's see, is, is this Electabuzz as good as the base one? No. All right, pack number three here. Gastrodon's not bad. I do have the Shellos, so then I, it, it is live. Uh, I have yet to see anything that I'm super excited about in here just yet. Okay, another Mothim here. Uh, I th think I saw I saw one earlier, right? Uh, but that, that's really nice. So we got two Mothams and a Burmy. I know that as much. We also do have some pretty decent enough supporter cards. And of course, Switch making a great return here. Switch is incredibly useful. All right, third pack. Oh, Salamence and Nidoking. Okay, these are two of my favorite Pokemon absolutely love Nidoking as a Pokemon. Salamence is a rare hollow. It's worth four bucks, so I'm wondering if it's even any good. I'll have to look at it a little bit more after this. 
pack number four. Dolphin. I love this Pokemon. Never never gets enough love. Nidoran. Perfect. Now we just need a Nidorino and we can play that Nidoking. King. Mothim. Are these even real Pokemon? Are these real Pokemon or are they just stuff made up for this game? What is this? I don't... Alright, so pack number five. Oh, Furret. Uh, Furret. Uh, flexible into anything. I do like in this set that they do have these uh, uh, kind of like energy list attacks which makes them a lot more flexible we also have another wormadan here so it kind of looks like we've got you know and burmy again we, and another burmy i didn't even see that we got the kind of the start of a good grass ground core here and i, I do like that as well all right so pack number six here Ooh, a charizard wow that is uh that is quite the pull don't think it's live just yet as we have pulled but uh, maybe, maybe. Uh, we have we have an interesting fire core, but we'll have to see exactly what we pull. All right, pack number five. Uh, we've got a Muck, no Grimer so far. Weevil, but no Sneasel. Arcanine, but no Growlithe. Seems to be the theme here. Burmy, I think, is one of those Pokemon that all those other weird ones uh, evolved from. Okay, we've got a lot of normal Pokemon here, though, which means that we ha we can, we should be able to play Mono with normal as kind of a backup, so we shouldn't have an energy problem this set like we did a couple weeks ago. Pack number six. Okay, Murkrow. There we go. We can finally use that Darkness Energy for something. And Nidorino. So, boom. We can actually play Nidoking, and for that reason alone, I'm probably going to go with the Psychic route, because I think we've got some good Pokemon there. Alright, next pack here. Oh, a Magmar. It's a good for fire, and we have a Steel Wormadam that doesn't exactly fill out with the other rest of the uh, Burmese and whatnot that we pulled, because it does require Steel-type energies, so we'll have to see exactly how that's going to fit in. I'm not too optimistic about it, but you know, it's definitely an option. All right, next pack here. Uh, so another Shellos. This time it's EC, so that's at least interesting. Miracle could could be flexed into a couple of different things, depending on exactly what strategy I want to go with. But I am feeling definitely this this grass ground core, especially if I pick up a Burloom uh, after getting the Shroomish. That could be pretty big. That could be pretty big. Pack number seven. Another Nidorino. That's nice. Uh, another Nidoran. Absol probably better than Murkrow. Pack number eight. Another Charmeleon. We have a shell gun, but no bag on, so still can't get to that Salamance. Another Wormaden, which is steel. Okay, that's fair. Wormaden Dem Trash Cloak. Electabuzz's evolution. Not too concerned about that. Probably not gonna play Electric. Okay, and we got our Grimer, and we do have a Muck, so now we have another evolutionary line we can play with the Psychics. Alright, next pack here. Okay, oh another Mothum. So I've got three Mothums here. I another Scriptulum. I did see that earlier, I just didn't mention it. Uh, and a Charmander, so Charmeleon, I could make Charizard live after that. But yeah, I mean, I mean, I'm really feeling this grass ground, just seeing what I'm looking at. All right, last pack. What we get? Oh, is that a? That's a Golem. All right. <laughs> well, I'm not too uh, too upset about that whatsoever. Uh, a Venomoth, Hopip, Burmy. Uh, that Flaffy is live from that Marif there, and a Furret. I don't. I see. I think I think I got a lot of like early stages of some and then late stages of others which makes it a little bit difficult to exactly see what is usable and what's not for this set oh there's the burloom i didn't even notice i got a burloom that's awesome so unfortunately we did not see any level x's which is kind of sad because that that's kind of the hallmark of this generation we do have a second another uh, round of gen 4 in order to see that but i would have liked to see them this turn otherwise we do have a lot of good grass ground core pieces which you know you're gonna find in this set grass and ground are uh, fairly common i would say for sure but other than that i think that we do have some stuff that we can work with here and i'm excited to see exactly what we can put together i will see you guys in the deck building pack number nine uh another nidoran perfect another darkness energy so that's good hmm we've only gotten the one trainer by the way in the first pack final pack let's see okay we've got another trainer that's good uh, let's see, we got a Grastrodon, another Nidoran, Carvana, we do not have Sharpedo, and then this Rival, you know, it's a Jaw 3, and then put the other two back on top of your deck, that's pretty good, and then I got this other one over here, I'll check out here in a second. Alright, so, uh, I can already tell you right now, we're gonna play Psychic with a, uh, normal core behind it, and then we'll probably throw in one or two dark Pokemon, just, to, just so we can uh, capitalize on those darkness energies. 
So I'll see what I can build and I'll see you guys in the deck builder. All right, so here we are with our deck and I think I'm gonna be trying to use as much of the strategy that has been provided for me as I can. So you might look at this and say, wait, hold on a second. There are one, two, three, four, five, six colors in your deck, Patrick. What is wrong with you? And like a lot of things, but none of them that have to do with this game. Um, so first off, we do have normal, uh, or we have colorless, so you know we don't necessarily have to worry about their energy types. But the interesting thing is that these Pokemon work best with multiple colors in the deck. Uh, which I thought was an interesting little tidbit to add in here, particularly with Ho-Oh is effectively a colorless Pokemon um, because the only attack it has is Rainbow Wing and it does 20 da um, damage times the number of different uh, colorless or different types of energy. So he's effectively a colorless in this sense. He's not really a fire type outside of just how that works. Um, also, it's a great counter against the ground and grass that James very well might be running. Again, Kecleon also similarly in the same vein because of how it works with all of these different types of energies. I have water, steel, grass, and ground energies to best utilize uh, Kecleon and Ho's ability. Kecleon basically for each color, he gains 40 resistance to that color. So if I give him a grass energy and he's being attacked by Bulbasaur, he has 40 uh, damage resistance, which is great. In addition, a lot of these, I, I mainly focus on grass and ground, and these three waters evolve into ground, so I don't really care about the water requirement there. So if I never draw any of these four waters, it's fine. Also, the metals can get searched out by Burmy, that then evolves into Wormadam. So that's actually not that bad, as well as their Trash Cloak Tack will then do 20 damage with just one energy cost, which is pretty nice. Bulbasaur is in here, no Ivasaur, no Venusaur, didn't pull any of them just because he has a, a uh, requirement-less sleep ability, which is really nice, and then a potential for 40 damage. So it's a good opener if I'm able to pull him at the open. Uh, and then obviously I've got uh, Breloom here, which requires fighting energy, uh, but is a grass-type Pokemon and it evolves from Shroomish down here as well. I can search my deck for three basic energy of any color. So if I need any of these guys, and I've got Smurgle out there, for no energy cost required, I can have zero in my hand, play Smurgle and I can get three energies immediately. It's very flexible, even though I have six colors in here, technically five, right? Because colorless is whatever. But even though I have five colors in here, the ability for me to get the colors that I need for all of these different Pokemon is very much present. It's going to be fairly easy, fairly consistent, I'm hoping. At least I do have a lot of search power, do a lot of draw power. Um, and I think that if I'm able to use that search power, that flexibility to stay on the board and keep tempo, then I should be fine. I'm not expecting James to be able to keep up with my tempo, but if he has a more powerful boss Pokemon, like if you drew a level X and he's able to get that out on the board, it very well might be over for me because that's just going to be too much damage that I will not be able to handle. But I think if it's a game of tempo, I 100% have this and it's been tempo so far. So I think that this should be in my corner. So we're going to see exactly what James is going to bring. And we are going to get straight into that battle. And we're going to probably win. I'll see you guys in the battle. All right. So like I said, uh, quite a bit of poison in here. But realistically, not as much. As, I didn't pull as much as I'd hoped. So here's here's the deal. We're basically just going to try to get to Muck and Nidoking. They're both very powerful Pokemon. Everyone else is basically just there to keep me alive and keep the game going until I can get to one of those two. Decent draw power with Rival and some search ability with BB Search. Switch is always very nice as well. It gives me some options without having to waste energy. Well, it's not really gonna be a problem in here because as you can see, we are absolutely stacked with energy. So I do like Quillfish's ability to poison my opponent's Pokemon when they hit it. And then Carvana is also in here. I had three options for dark Pokemon because I really wanted to use this darkness energy. And those three options were Carvana, Absol, or Marowak. And I went with Carvana because, well, 
I already had a couple other water Pokemon in here, so it just made sense to also throw in Carvana. So that's where we're at. I think we're gonna do okay. The, I looked at some of the cards that are actually in this set, and I'm, I'm pretty certain that we can survive whatever Patrick pulled, um, barring a couple of rather insane things. But it's only one way to find out, so I'll see you guys in the duel. All right, James, here we are in the battle. Are you ready to go? I I think so. Um, I'm actually pretty confident in the deck that I put together this week. And more, more importantly, it has a bunch of cards that I, of, of Pokemon that I really like. So I think I'm oh. going to win. All right, well, you very well might because my polls were not that good. <laughs> so we'll see. All right. Let's so I think you might already win this because uh, you've got more Pokemon on your bench. Okay. Okay. Uh, I have to ask you because I was saying this when I was pulling cards. What the heck is Burmy and what are all these versions of it? I'm you've so never confused. seen Burmy before. I, I literally I'm sitting there. Like, what is this Pokemon? Well, I don't understand. I have no uh, idea what Burmy is. Okay. Well, yeah. No, it's a uh, it's a basic you know bug Pokemon you get at the beginning that has three different or four different forms that it evolves into. Oh. Uh, so it evolves into three different types of Wormadam, and uh, each one of those Wormadams have a different secondary type. So it goes Bug Grass, Bug Ground, Bug Steel. By the way, it evolves into Motham. Oh, so, gotcha. So I played Rival. So reveal the top five cards in my deck. You select three to add to my hand. There are two go to the top of my deck. Okay. Oh boy! Wow, that's what you decided to give me. Okay. Yeah, I decided to give you all of the Pokemon and none of the energy. <laughs> How? I'm not gonna give you a bunch of energies. Fortunately, over half the oh, deck is energy. <laughs> oh, of course it is. Okay. All right. All well, right well, let's see. Do I want to go? Oh, so you're running. You're running Psycho Dark. Is that what you're doing? Psycho Dark. That's an interesting way that to is, put it. That is a meta. There's. Is it I really? I think we're both running meta decks. Yeah. So there's two meta decks in this format that are important to talk about. So there's Grass Swarm and then there's Psycho Dark. Ah, see, I did not know that. So that is, I'm going to use yes. Dish Out and draw cards. Okay, that's fine. I think I'm also running a Spin Dead in my deck. Um, so this leaves me with an interesting choice here. I can either um, evolve into one of two Pokemon with my Burmy right now. Um, I think I think I'm just going to do Motham. I think that's the right move. Uh, and then I'm going to evolve into Gastrodon. Ooh, okay. Uh, yeah. Gastrodon. Is that West um, or whatever? Let me see. Yeah, West. Okay, because yeah, I, I got Gastrodon East. Gastrodon West C. Yes, yes. West C is arguably the better one. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach a Grass Energy to Mothum. Mm -hmm. I'm going to use Raging Scales to Ooh, do boy. Uh, damage to uh, your thing. All right. What does that Raging Scales do? This tech does 30 damage plus 40 more damage. You have any damage. Wow, that's actually a lot of it freaking is... damage. Yes, it is. Uh, All right, I'm gonna. very good. I'm gonna involve Rattata and Eradicate real quick. Psychic Energy on Routes, and then I'll use Dish Out to draw a couple more cards. I'm glad I got Spinda up here first. That way I can just kind of draw, 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 draw. Yeah, I'm gonna attach a. Uh, I'm gonna attach a Ground Energy to Gastrodon here, and then I'm gonna use uh, Raging Scales. Yep. Out. I'm gonna throw Ralts up here. Um, right. So I'll play Nitto. And then okay. I will play another rival. Uh, yep. Okay. Give me Select. Okay. Three of those cards. <laughs> well, I can either give you the Nidorino that allows you to evolve your uh, Nidoran, a Stantler, which is another basic Pokemon, I, or the three energies. I think I'm just gonna go with the energies. Oh, good. I was actually down to like only like three energies in my hand, so this is <sighs> much. <laughs> yes, I see that. All right, I'm gonna put an energy on Nitto. And then I'm gonna use Confuse Ray. Yes, it worked. That's fine. I'm gonna go ahead and attach an energy to Gastrodon here. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm gonna check something real quick. Okay. It needs four energies for that Wild Waves move. It does, it does. But I'm just gonna activate Switch here and just uh, use a Raging Flood right now so I can bypass the uh, Confusion. All right, all right, that's fair. Uh, so I'm gonna evolve into Nidorino. Oh, of course you do that. <laughs> no, I already had it in my hand. <laughs> Oh, did you? Yeah. Oh, I should have given it to you then. And then I'll put that. another energy on him, and then sure. I will confuse Ray and fail miserably. Okay. I will play a hop it from my hand, and uh, I will use Raging Flood again, I guess. Because I'm not under any pressure right now, because there's no, uh, you know, there's no confusion or anything like that. Unfortunately. Man, I'm just not drawing what I need here. All right, I'm going to no, throw not. another energy onto Nitto. 
Um, and then I think that I'm going to confuse Ray and fail, so you're going to knock out Ralts next turn. That is correct. I will be knocking out Ralts next turn. Now, <clears throat> this is where I run into an interesting choice here. Uh, I think this is the move. I, I think that's the move right there. Ooh, metal energy. I do. I gets me closer to uh, closer to wild ways here, which is a one shot. So I noticed you didn't place any energy, any energy next turn. So you seem to be having some energy problems. That is up for your interpretation. Okay, noted. So you're bringing out Nidorino here. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Let's see, because he's not weak to you. He's actually weak to no, himself. He's... Yeah. Uh, both of the, your Pokemon were weak to Psychic there. So are you going to poison me here? Get that 50 damage off? I'm uh, going to work on it. However, <laughs> um, I'm trying to decide who I want to put energy on on my bench. I, think... I mean, it's it's tough. You've you've put all of them on it arena, so you kind of have to choose a Pokemon that can attack pretty quickly. Yeah. Because if I draw if I draw a single energy this turn, you're kind of going to get wiped because it's going to do 180 damage and your Nidorino's 80, 80 HP. Yeah, I just got to hope that you don't. So I'm going to throw one yeah. on to Raticate. Also, keep in mind that Raging Flood itself does uh, 20 damage plus 10 for every damage counter on West Sea. This is why West Sea is really good. Uh, and then heals him for 20. Holy crap. In case you didn't read that of my card. No, I hadn't read that yet. Just 20 damage. So please go ahead and go ahead and use Poison Horn, which will put it to uh, to 50 damage. And uh, that's well, insane. That is insane. legitimately insane. It, it Gastrodon West Sea is really good. Holy for this crap! Set, at least it's in the breakdown. People saw I I uh, I only I mentioned there's only one meta card in this set, which I did draw, but uh, it is not Gastrodon, unfortunately. Mm, well, I mean, holy crap. Also, there's only one live level X card in this set by itself, which I thought was funny. There's two level Xs, but only one of them is usable. I guess that man. Well, All right. screw well, it. That, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and attach a Grass Energy to Gastrodon, yep. and I will use Wild Waves here. And that does 10 damage to each of your benched Pokemon. And yours. And each of my benched Pokemon. Yeah, that's true. Uh, let's get Raticate out here, I guess. But but I will. Uh, I'm going to point out here that the Raging Waves does 10 damage to my Mothum, right? Which then activates the Raging Scales uh, yep. bonus, so now it does 70 damage instead of 30. Yep. So I'm <laughs> Which is enough to one-shot that Raticate. <laughs> an energy on the mill tank, and then I'm going to use Gnaw off. Okay. okay. Um, so this poison is kind of being very annoying. I'm going to play Spinda, so I'm going to activate Switch here. I'm going to switch out from Mothum, get rid of, that gets rid of the poison status, mm -hmm. and then allows me to use Raging Scales to one-shot your Raticate. Yep. Uh, so I guess we'll throw a mill tank out here, just kind of. To In the my deck fodder. breakdown, this is exactly what I said was going to happen with my team. <laughs> I'm glad that it's working. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm gonna put this Ratata on the top of my deck with BB okay. Search. I'm gonna search my deck for Smeargle. Okay. All right. That's fine. With Smeargle out here. Smeargle um, is pretty good. I don't know how well it does in the current board state, but it is it is a pretty good card. Well, you know, I gotta do something. So I'm gonna throw a an energy on Mill Tank. And right, well if you get a good roll on continuous tumble, you can make take me out in one move. Yeah, I'm gonna try. Um I instantly got <laughs> I was gonna say, I was looking at it, I'm like that's that's uh that's not a victory here. I'm gonna throw down a energy on Spinda here. Yeah. I'm gonna play another Shellos, and then uh, I'm obviously gonna take out your mill tank here. Oh no, not. Haha. -ha. I did my my math was bad. Bad maths. Bad maths. I survived with exactly one. You did. You did survive with exactly one. Um, I will point out, Motham does have uh, no retreat cost. Uh yes, I do. I do see that. I'm gonna throw an yes. energy onto Smeargle. Um, and then I'll use Continuous Tumble and continue to do no damage. Wow. Oh my gosh, your flips are really bad. Yeah, you're gonna take this, Holy you're gonna crap. take this one handily. Uh, probably, probably. Uh, oh wow. I'm smear out uh, here, I guess. Um, man. I, I'm just gonna say that, uh, I haven't, uh, I haven't even seen my, my big linchpin card. Really? 
And that yet makes you have, no you sense have two cards, two cards sitting out here that I think are better than anything I pull. My ability to, to understand how they work in tandem with each other is, is very important. I'm going to use Trace. Okay. And I got Tails. So, all right, you win. That's fine. Um, I, I honestly, yeah, I think Raging Scales just knocks him out, mm -hmm. here, doesn't it? Yep. Yep. And that's the end. All right. Well, we're off to game two then, James. Evidently. I'm going to remind you, James, before we get started here, that uh, this is the actual part of the trading card game where I got into it and I was starting to actually battle people. Gotcha. I, you know when I got into the trading card game? Like two weeks ago? Yeah, about two weeks ago, yeah. All right. I had to take a mulligan, apparently. Oh, that's that's a free card for me, then. I like that. Yeah, yeah, it is. All right. Let's, uh, oof, 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 oof. I did not get nearly as gas of a hand as I did last time. Last hand was, was pretty darn good. Double double switch at the start was uh, it's pretty big. Yeah, yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, that is a mulligan hand for sure. I will definitely draw one card for that. All right, you go first. Oh right. Another Burmy. So oh, Kecleon. Okay. Yeah, but this is a different Burmy this time. Uh, it see. is. There's there's multiple Burmies. So I'm gonna there. Yes, there is multiple Burmies. So I'm gonna forego the initial attack for Burmy and I'm gonna throw a Grass Energy on Kecleon. And uh, I'm just going to end the turn here, though. Burmy's just going to take a hit, most likely unless I can evolve it next turn. All right. So I think, hmm. Because the Trash Cloak isn't as good as the Grass Cloak in my, as what my hand has. If I drew one of my Metal Energies, then it would be good. But I'm running four types of energy in this deck. Oh, wow. Yes. But that's only, and specifically running four types of energy for one card. All right, I think I'm going to That's actually a fire type. <laughs> use collect on turn one because I want right. to draw some. Sure, sure, sure. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to play a hop up here. Then I th think what the move here is, I'm going to play a water energy on Kecleon. Activate switch for Kecleon. I was really hoping you didn't have switch. I'm going to try to switch. one shot. Nidoran, yep. yes. Good Good heads. Good I was heads. really, really banking on you not having a <laughs> switch in your hand, because uh, I don't have a way to come back from that. Yeah. I'm just going to say that I did just draw from my prize pool the one meta card in this set. All right. Which I will be playing next well, time. I think you're going to take it away with that. So. Probably. Just looking at looking at what I'm doing right now, it is I, I have a lot more tempo. Go there. ahead. Oh, I can evolve. Uh, oh, it has to evolve from Sandy Cloak. I didn't even read that. I've yeah. got a dead card in my hand that I can't use. All right, well, I am going to play this so I can uh, search up for up to any combination of two basic Pokemon and basic energy cards here. We are going to grab a ho and a Smeargle here. You got a ho Ho's in this set? What the heck? Yes. Read what its uh, only attack does, by the way. Uh, okay, so it's 20 damage times the number of different types of basic energy. Oh, okay, so that's why you have four types yeah, of energy. That's why I'm running four energy cards. Uh, so I'm going to start by throwing an energy on ho -Oh, Yeah. fighting energy. So I've got a dead card in my hand, so everyone that's watching this is going to be like, you're stupid, which is right. Um, so we're going to go ahead and just blind scratch again. And I hit it, so that's good. Blind scratch, if it misses, or it, it, you flip a flip a coin, and if it is a uh, heads, or if it's a tails, then it deals 20 damage to one of my Pokemon randomly, I think. Yeah. Man, okay, I didn't get the poison there. That's unfortunate. Oh, maybe I get to choose. I'm not totally sure. No, you did not get the poison there. Um, hmm. Well, I guess I'm just going to throw another energy on Pidgey and pass. Right. My hand is pretty hot here. garbage. I'm gonna evolve this hop up here. I'm gonna switch out, or I'm gonna I'm gonna put a grass energy on him, and uh, I'm gonna swap. For, I'm gonna retreat here and swap for the skip loom. I'll discard the grass energy and then I'm gonna just U turn attack for the uh, knockout and then switch back into Kecleon. All right. That gives me a guaranteed knockout so I don't have to worry about uh, whether or not I was gonna miss. Man, this continues to get worse. Uh... Well, it's just that I just I can just maintain tempo. If I were to get two skip looms on there, which I just drew another skip loom, but I don't have another hop up in my hand. But if I were to get two skip looms on the field then uh, I could conceivably just keep you turning and keep flipping Skiploom into another Skiploom. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to blind scratch here. 
Uh, it does 20 damage to one of my Pokemon, which means I missed. I'm going to do that to Smeargle, because you don't have any boss monsters on the field, so there's nothing that I really want. Yeah, I'm, I'm just going to keep pecking. Smash. I can't do anything else. I'm going to play a Fanfy. I'm going to place a Grass Energy on ho -Oh, Blind Scratch again. Yep. Knocked out this time. Uh, whew. Um, I can't do any attacks, so I'll end. All right, I'm going to Evolve Burn Me into Mothum. It's, and this is exactly what I said was going to happen, is that I'm going to maintain tempo, and that's how I win. So, blind scratch, go for win, yep. and that is game two. So, a very, very quick game one and game two, James. What do you think of that? I think you pulled, like, 400 <laughs> times better than I did. <laughs> I don't know if I pulled better, because looking at the set, you, you have access to Venusaur, Blastoise, and Charizard. I, and I didn't uh, get any full of evolutions. those. I didn't either. I got Bulbasaur, and that's the only one of those that is in my in my deck. Also, you have access to Gardevoir level X. Like, I don't know if you pulled that. Nope. But that could have been live. The two best Pokemon um, that I had were Muck and Nidoking. Which are good. It's just I don't think that they're necessarily that good against what I'm running here. Because what I'm running here, the the very, it's a very clear strategy of just trying to maintain tempo. Yeah, and then game two, I just kept drawing evolutions and energy. That's all I had was <laughs> yeah, evolutions uh, I, and I energy. I mean, having... For, for me, my deck is, I'm pretty sure, almost all stage one and basics. Like, I know I have Skiploom. I did not draw Jumpleth, but I'm just playing, like, two copies of Skiploom, two copies of Hoppet for whatever I'm playing. Kecleon, stage one. Uh, Hose, a stage one. I have Donphan in my hand right now, which is a stage two. Um, but, like, so I can constantly be evolving my guys and keep, like, again, keeping up that tempo. I just like I like playing around with status conditions. That's like, I think that's, that's a really good strategy. It's just that I have so much ability to switch out my guys that the status doesn't really affect me. All yeah. Well, in the being so I opened this game with Nitto and Nitto Ran in my or Nitto Ran and Nittorino in my hand, and yeah. so I was basically playing that first turn thinking, okay, I can I can theoretically evolve, but I couldn't do anything. I want to get the straw off, and I'm really really banking on him not having switch in his hand because if he does have switch then Kecleon can knock out if he if he flips correctly, which you did. Yeah. Uh, yes. But if you didn't, then you wouldn't be able to uh, retreat and attack in the same turn. So I kind of gambled there, didn't work out, and as I continued drawing, realized not that it really would have mattered because he would have been able to take out Nidorino with relative ease. And I never saw Nidoking either, so. Yeah, that, well, I mean, that's what happens when you only have one copy in your deck yeah. uh, of any card. You're, the likelihood of you seeing it you know, I had a search for ho -Oh, and I just wanted to show you ho -Oh. <laughs> But now we can head back yeah. to the uh, progression series where I, we're back in base <laughs> yeah. set and I can play around with my uh, with my status conditions. Exactly, exactly. But, you know, we're not out of the woods. You're At least you're not out of the woods yet, James, because we're going to be moving on next episode to Platinum, Heart Gold, Soul Silver meta. So we're going to catch you guys next week. If you like this series, like, subscribe, and comment down below if you have any suggestions going forward. And we'll catch you next week. Have a good week, guys.